welcome everyone let's set up the brand new iphone 14 so you're going to start off with this hello screen if you're wondering this is hello in a bunch of different languages and then you have this little white bar right here so this is used to navigate part of the operating system so first step is we need to swipe up and now we are brought to the next view so here we're going to select our language so for me english then it's going to ask you to select your country or region so when it comes to iphone 14 this should be automatically selected to the region of where you bought your iphone however if the region is wrong for whatever reason you can always scroll down and select the one you need so i'll select united kingdom here now it says quick start so if you have an older iphone that you would like to just get everything fully working you bring it next to the new one you're going to see set up new iphone and what this would allow you to do is it would set the wi-fi passwords and stuff like that straight on your new iphone okay do keep in mind you will need to have bluetooth and wi-fi on the old iphone and it must be running ios 11 or later as well so now i'm going to tap on set up manually do keep in mind if you have not connected to a wi-fi network it would now ask you to enter in that Wi-Fi network. But because I already did it earlier, you can see right here, it's gone to the activation. If you're at this part and it asks for an Apple ID and password, then that means that someone has tried to scam you. If there is an Apple ID and password after it says it tries to activate your iPhone, that means the previous owner of your iPhone 14 did not remove that old login and you can't remove their old login about asking the old seller so ask the seller and if they are unable to remove that lock then they're trying to scam you you must get a refund of course if you buy new or refurbished that should not be a problem now we see data and privacy we just need to tap on continue this just talks about all of the data which is collected while using your iphone we now have face id so face id is the facial unlock that is housed right here so I'm going to tap on continue and then let's tap on get started. So what you need to do is you need to bring your face within this frame here and then you need to move your head in a circle if you're okay. You only need to do one scan with the new iPhone 14 in the past you used to do two. Now if you still use a mask you can select use face ID with mask. It may ask you to do a second scan. However I'm going to select don't use face ID with mask. What this means is you can still use Face ID, but if you have a mask on, you would either need to use your Apple Watch to unlock, or you would need to enter in a passcode. So I'm going to select Don't Use Face ID with Mask. And now we see Face ID is set up. So now it's going to ask to create a passcode. I personally don't like the six digit passcodes, probably because I forget them, but you can also tap on Passcode Options, and then you have the option to switch to a custom alphanumeric code, which is as long as you'd like i wouldn't recommend what i would personally recommend is you set this right here a four digit numeric code so i'm going to use this right here and now we are brought to the apps and data view so what's really cool with iphone is if you do have an alt iphone okay you can directly transfer all of the files without any fuss okay you would select transfer directly from iphone it would bring you back to the quick start and then it would do all of that transfer however in my case uh, i'm going to select don't transfer apps and data because this video isn't too long if you do create icloud backups on your old iphone you could also restore from an icloud backup and if you've ever created a backup for your old iphone on a computer you can restore from mac or pc if you're transferring from an old Android, you'd also be able to move data from your old Android. But keep in mind, the amount of data you can move from Android is limited. So I'm going to select and transfer apps and data. So in this case, it now wants Apple ID. So if you're using iPhone for the first time, you may not have an Apple ID to enter. If that's the case, select forgot password or don't have Apple ID. And you can see right here, Apple are giving you the option to create a free Apple ID. I would recommend you create the Apple ID, 
because Apple ID is required for iMessage, FaceTime, FaceTime for video call, App Store, which is where you download apps. Most services on the iPhone will require the Apple ID to be set up in the iPhone. I'm personally going to select set up later in settings because I enter that one in, the tutorial will become too long. So I'll tap on don't use. Now we have the terms and conditions for using iOS, which is the software. So I'll tap on agree. Now it says keep your iPhone up to date. So you just tap on continue. What this means is when a new software update is available, you will always be updated. Tap on this. You have iMessage and FaceTime. So I didn't enter my Apple ID, so I will need to select not now. However, for you, if you do see this screen and have signed into your Apple ID, just tap on continue and it should automatically sign you in. Now we have location services. Uh, I would recommend you turn this on features like Apple Maps, um, a bunch of other stuff as well, uh, will use the location. What's cool about the iPhone is you can turn off location access to certain apps. Maybe you don't want Facebook, you know, knowing where you are 24 seven, you can turn off that access. I'll have tutorials on my channel, so just check it out. So I'm firstly gonna turn this one on. Now it says set up mobile service. So this is for the eSIM, okay? So the quick summary is if you are trying to use eSIM and you have a carrier QR code, which was provided in your email, you would select use QR code, and then you would scan the QR code on another device, okay? If you're wondering how the QR code looks like, you can see it will look something like this, okay? So you would scan that one and then you would have your eSIM activated. But also, if you have your old iPhone here and you didn't transfer the data, you can tap on transfer from nearby iPhone and take a look at this. It will give you the option to transfer the phone number from your old iPhone to your new iPhone, okay? Even if the old iPhone has physical SIM, it will be able to convert it into eSIM, which is actually really cool, okay? So I'm going to personally select set up later in settings and then I'm going to skip the eSIM. Now, if you do have an iPhone, which is not from the US, you do have a physical SIM card slot, so it's not really a big deal. Now we have Siri. This is the voice assistant. So you can ask for commands such as what is the time, what is the weather, stuff like that. I personally have never used Siri unless I've used it by accident. So I like to turn it off. If you select set up later in settings, that will turn it off. Screen time is going to show you how often you use your device. I actually like this. I have it on uh, all my devices. So I recommend you tap on continue iPhone analytics. So this will just help Apple improve their products. I personally don't share because it just uses battery life. Then we have the appearance. So you have light and dark. Dark appearance. We'll say battery life. Uh, I personally use it. Nice phone. Phone's kind of busted. But uh, uh, I do use the dark appearance uh, in my personal iPhone right here, the iPhone 12 mini. I recommend you use it too. For some people may prefer the lights, it also looks better on camera. So I'm going to personally select light. I would recommend you try dark. If you don't like dark, you can always change it in settings. Now we have the display zoom. For most people, you would always select standard. I've never had a situation where I selected zoom. However, if you do need to select zoom, you can see everything will be larger on your iPhone, okay? And so that may help you view things. So I'm going to select standard. And press continue. We now have emergency SOS. So if you press and hold the side button or either volume up or down and you long press for long enough, it will allow you to create emergency call. You have crash detection as well, which will start an emergency call if you want to crash. And you also have emergency SOS via satellite, but this one's coming soon. So I'll tap on continue. We see welcome to iPhone and you swipe up to get started. Okay. So it really wants me to set up that eSIM. I'm going to tap on not now. So once we set up, I think uh, you deserve to learn how to use the phone, okay? So first of all, you tap on an app icon, you can open up the app. 
But once the app is opened, how do you go home? So what you do is you flick up, okay, one finger where this little bar is, it'll either be black or white. You do it with a little flick, so you don't keep your finger held down, you flick, and then release, okay, so flick release, and you can see the app will close. Eventually, you'll get used to the motion. You don't have to swipe exactly where this bar is. You can swipe you know, here, for example. You just have to make sure your phone is low enough on the screen, your hand even, to go home. So I'm opening up all these apps, but how do I close them, right? So what you do is we're doing this flick release. Okay, this flick to go home. To so go into multitasking, you're going to do the same motion but you're not going to release your finger, okay? You can do a slide and hold, okay? And you'll feel this vibration on the back of the phone. And once you feel that vibration, you release your finger, okay? Flick and hold. And you can see I'm able to do it every single time, right? Going home, going to multitasking. You'll get the hang of it eventually. And now we're in the multitasking view. So in here, we just find where the app box is, which we can slide to see. You can do a little flick up, boom, flick up, boom, and you can close out of applications. If I open up an app and I go into a sub menu, you may be wondering how on earth do you go back? Reaching for this back button, I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's not going to work. What you can do instead is just slide from the edge of the screen, from the left hand side only, and slide to the right, and this will allow you to go back. You can just do a quick flick motion like this, boom boom and you can see you are going back all right you may press and hold the power button and it's asking for siri but you don't want siri so in order to turn off your iphone you press and hold the power key and the volume down key together press and hold these two at the same time so let's do this together three two one click and hold click and hold click and hold do not release do not release and when you feel that little vibration you're going to see the slide to power off you can just slide to power off here on top of this, you may have a situation where your iPhone is frozen. So the screen is not responding to touch or you have a black screen. So it's essential you learn how to do a force restart. So in order to force a restart, that'll fix the frozen screen or the black screen, you need to quickly click and release volume up, click release volume down, and then click and hold, in case you don't release, just click and hold the power button. So I advise we do this together. Get your iPhone, three, two, one, click release volume up, Click release volume down, click and hold the power button. Make sure you do it to the T, because if you're too slow, this will not work. And you just keep on holding the power button until you see the Apple logo. Once you see the Apple logo, you can release your finger from the power button, okay? And then your iPhone will restart, and that will fix a black screen or a frozen screen. So there you go, we set up the uh, iPhone 14. We've got everything working. With that being said, thanks for watching. See you guys later. Bye-bye.